me getting on the on the webinar on recordings, right? Okay, so let's get started here. Uh, let me get this out of the way. Okay, so hello everybody. Okay, we got 213 people in the room and counting this thing. We're gonna rock this webinar tonight. We're gonna be talking about human trading behavior. Okay, I like the, using the word human. I don't call I don't call people people. I call them human. So let's take a look at some of this stuff here. So before we continue, one more time, how many of you guys are new here? Say it proudly. How many of you guys are new here? Excellent, excellent, excellent. How many of you guys have seen my webinars uh, on YouTube before but are here for the first time? Wow, there's a lot of people who are new. I don't know if you guys are just typing me and me again and again and again, but okay, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, how many of you guys are MPA members, Mastering Price Action Course people, MPA students? Fantastic, fantastic. Excellent. MPA in the house. <laughs> okay, fantastic, fantastic. So let's get this party started. Let's get this party started. Okay, so again, the topic for today is mastering human trading psychology and human trading behavior. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into a couple of things. We're going to talk about how everyone trades, how the average person reacts to the market. As you guys have seen some of my previous videos uh, on, on how we like to deal with uh, uh, how people are trading. Because think of it this way. If you want to buy... You want to buy from someone who's selling. If you want to sell, you want to sell from someone. Uh, you want to sell to someone who's buying. You know, very simple. But at any time of the market, someone is always buying and selling. So it's like, well, how can I get a one up on them if someone is always selling and always buying? There is one moment in the market when th when things line up. Is anyone else having sound issues? Everyone sound okay? Yeah. Okay, and should be on a pretty decent internet speed here. I think they have a gigabyte of internet speed here in this hotel, so should be okay. If there is internet problem, uh, uh, try to log out and log back in. So my screen, there's a little green green patch here. If it's green, you're good to go. If it's turning different colors, that means it's internet on your end. So try it to log out and log back in, okay? Is that all right? Everyone understand that? So this little bar on the top right on your screen, that represents your internet connection to me. Okay, let's get going here. So back to the main thing. So the whole whole concept is, well, if everyone is buying and selling at every any given point of the market, oh, well, how can you get an edge over them? Because that's what trading is, right? The basic concept of trading is someone make a mistake and that profit's coming to you, right? That's the basic concept of trading. Put it in a very basic nutshell. Yeah, that's the concept of trading. Okay, so we're going to go straight into this. Um, let's, there's a little screen that pops up. Okay, we're going to go straight into this. Let's do this first on the charts. Okay, okay, I'm gonna be drawing a circle. Let me know when you guys can see it. Good, 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 good. Okay, so let's get started here. So, here comes the buyers. Buyers are going up, pulling back. Buyers are going up, pulling back. Buyers are going up. Everyone see that buy? That last buy? Okay, tell me one thing here. What do you notice on the screen? What do you notice on the screen? Now, when most people, 
Okay, I, I, I had a discussion with this with, with some of my one-on-one -on -one students today here, uh, and I also bring this up in the correlation course a bit. Now, when most people deal with situations like this, they don't really look at this area. They're not really looking at this area. Okay, Armo, I can keep seeing your mouse here. <laughs> so they don't really look at this area because their eyes are oogling this thing. Right? Their eyes are oogling this thing, this little piece here. They're like, what is that? That's the curiosity face, right? That's what everyone keeps looking at. But when, they're, when they keep looking at stuff like that, how do you think the person is going to sell here? They're not. They're going to be scared. They're going to be scared of looking at that. Now, here's why. Here's why. Here, here's, something, here's something to think about. If the markets are in an uptrend, and you're like, fantastic. I need to prepare for if there's a pullback, I'm going to be buying it because the market says uptrend. But if the pullback doesn't create enough sellers, well, then who are you going to make money from? Basic logic. Who's the money going to come from? You're going to buy with other buyers? You're going to, you know, saying you're buying, I'm buying, he's buying, she's buying. So where's the money going to come from? Who's going to pay our bills? Yeah, if there's no... So there, it has to be sellers, right? And there has to be constant sellers, constant sellers. That's why there's pullbacks. Now, wh who are these sellers? You know who these sellers are? They're the occasional gamblers who say, well, the market can't go up forever, so I think it's going to sell soon. I think it's going to sell soon. It can't go up forever. I think it's going to sell soon. So what they do is they, they wait for something to stick out. So if I say this is a big upward movement and then I do this, does that stick out to them that, oh yeah, it's a sell, I knew it? No, no, they're not gonna be looking at that as the sellers are here. Yes, I'm so happy. But the moment a big candle shows up, their eyes are like, whoa, what's that? What is that thing? That gives them confidence and that activates sellers to start coming in. That's when they're like, okay, I'm going to start selling. They don't sell here because they can't anticipate. They start selling somewhere in this area. But now we start getting prepared like, okay, money is starting to flow into the market for us. Money is starting to flow in the market for us. So we start to prepare for our buys. We cannot buy a market that's really high up in the air. Hence the term, stay away from resistance. Okay, now whether you look at it in that terminology, stay away from resistance, or you look at it in terminology like, who's selling up there anyways? Who are you going to make money from? Okay, whichever language makes sense to you, stick to that story. Cool, so far so good, everyone with me? Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Same thing. Markets are coming in a downtrend. Downtrend. And here comes the pullback. Oh, this looks like the buyers tried to come up and then the sellers are here. Let's prepare for sell. Is that sell going to work? No. As much as the pattern might agree with the cell happening, you know, it might show up a little head and shoulders or whatever, as much as the pattern shows up like that, that a cell is going to happen, it's not going to work because there's no sellers, sorry, there's no buyers for you to sell to. There's only a bunch of sellers. So let, let me put it this way. When the market is doing this, okay, when the market's doing that, is anyone actually doing anything from the retail traders? No. But when it does this, what happens to the retail traders? What do they do? Or the average trader? What do they do? They buy. So did they buy down here? No. They bought in panic or in FOMO, as they call it, up in this zone here, somewhere up in this area here, correct? Everyone understand that logic so far? Now, 
Now, I'm going to explain that same logic to you to the left here. Don't forget that logic. When the market moves down so aggressively from here, don't instead of this area here, wouldn't you think the retail traders turn seller here? That's their sell area. So if the retail traders are selling, you are selling, I am selling, well, who are we making money from? There's no one buying. No one, exactly. That's why these spikes upwards happen. All these small sellers get stopped out. And as the spike upwards happen, all the stop out sellers start buying because they're like, oh my God, it's a buy. All the people who thought the market cannot go down forever, they start seeing confirmation. They're like, they start buying. They're like, oh yeah, see, I told you. Let me go onto all the forums on the internet and post out how good of a trader I am. So I can start telling everybody, see, I told you guys it's a buy. <laughs> so, so everyone starts getting, you know, riled up, uh, you know, because they get confirmation bias. They're like, yeah, see, I, I knew it. But then what happens? Slightly into that moment, slightly higher and slightly higher and slightly higher. And then, boom, brand new lower lows. Brand new lower lows. Okay, yeah, shut down, knocked out, knocked out of the sky. And they're like, what happened? You know, deer in the headlights. You know, so in this whole concept, what we're trying to do today, this is just an intro. What we're trying to do today is this is the logic you want to focus on, not a pattern, not a system, not any sort of strategy or technique. You need to understand the logic of what am I doing? Am I trading in a location that's irrelevant or am I trading in a location that has potential money there? Make sense? So far so good? Yeah, this happens all the time, all the time. Every single moment of the market, all the time. Okay, so let's keep going, let's keep going. And clean this up. Uh, in fact, let's bring up the charts. Okay, also at the end of this webinar, I'm gonna share with you my uh, my trades I've been taking. Uh, in the last few two or three webinars that I've been showing you guys my trades, I'm gonna show you towards the end of the webinar of what happened to that trade, how much money did I make, and stuff like that. So we'll 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 recap that towards the end. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these markets here. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this so I can start drawing it for you guys. Here, here we go. Okay, here comes the screenshot. I'm gonna draw a circle. Let me know if you can see the circle. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, now take a look at this. Markets collapse from here, okay? And to help ease your pain, I'm gonna do this because I know many of you guys cannot focus. I'm gonna remove the time frame. I'm going to remove the currency pair and I'm going to cover everything up so your brain can just focus on a simple chart. Forget the time frame, forget the hour of the day, forget everything. Just focus on the design. <laughs> okay? Now, massive sellers coming in, correct? Massive, massive sellers coming in. All eyes are on this seller. Okay, all eyes are on that seller. They're like, whoa, what is that? You know, so they're seeing that massive seller coming in, reaches this part of the point where it starts to hover. Now, when the massive sell comes in, who sells from up here? Who sells from up there? What kind of trader sells from up there? Exactly, big boys. Big boys, banks, smart trader, hedge funds. The anticipators. They sell from up there. Who starts? What, what happens when the market reaches down around this price? What happens to those people? Other oh, sellers. Yeah, here comes the retail people. They start selling. So they're like, oh, my God, it's going down. I, I need to sell this. I need to, you know, there goes my Ferrari. I need to get in on this. So they start selling around here. If every, banks are trading and the retail traders are selling, there's no buyers. Hence, even though the pattern and the design here looks like get ready for a sell, it's not going to happen. 
it's not going to happen. So a sudden spike comes up, takes them all out. Takes them all out while these guys over here are like patiently waiting and they're like, I see what's happening. That's okay. I got time. I'm not in a hurry. For me, it's all about making money. It's not about being right. There's a big difference how the billionaires think. They can be wrong. They're happy with being wrong, but they just want to make money. That's all that matters to them. What the average individual ego comes in between. They want to be right. They don't care about making money. They want to be right. So here comes the problem. They get stopped out and everyone wants to start buying now. And in this buying process, same thing. No one buys down here. They need a confirmation. So they start participating up in this zone. They start buying up there because they're like, oh, yeah, I, I guess it's going up. I can see it. I can see it. So as they're starting to buy up in that area, the big boys are preparing for their launch back down. Yeah. Sell, 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 sell. They start preparing for all that stuff. And then they knock the wind out of it. It goes down so quickly, they don't know what hit them. Okay. Is that logic starting to make sense? Yeah. So if you think of the retail trader, he makes approximately two to three losses in, in this whole movement. Two to three losses in those this whole movement, while the big boy makes two decent profits out of this. Okay, so if you compare this logic together, where the, the retail trader is getting two or three losses out of this, while the big boy is making two profits out of this, notice the situation. When the market came down, there's money to be made. When the market went up, there's money to be made. When the market went down again, there's money to be made. Yet, the retail trader only made losses. Now, you, you see where the problem comes in. The problem does not come in, how do I read the market? The problem comes in in the thought process. This is the way a human mind works. They participate. Exactly, Prince. They participate. So do you see how their mind lines up in that one moment? Yeah, it's FOMO. Their mind lines up to trade always down here for a sell, up here for a buy. Now, if you start to start to master this information, you're like, okay, um, Chris, Chris Sayers, FOMO stands for fear of missing out. It's an abbreviation. Okay. So the, are you, are you guys all starting to make sense of uh, what this is trying to say? <laughs> Give us the red pill, break us free. Okay, good, good. Let's look at some more examples. Let's look at some more examples. Let's get rid of all this drawings here. Let's take a look at another one. See if I can move it out, move it out, move it out. Okay, these are very, uh, here we go. Here's the buy side of things. Da, da, da. Fantastic. Okay, you ready for this? Actually, let me zoom in more because I think uh, this might not be so easily visible to some people uh, based on the resolution. I'll make it bigger and nicer so everyone can see this. Okay, okay, nice and big charts. Okay, this should be easier on the eyes. Um, and I'm going to do this now. Okay. What's the last thing you see? Uh, Ricardo, no worries. Welcome, welcome. What's the last thing you see? Yeah, an uptrend, right? Okay. Now, is that last moment quite visible? Like, does it stick out? Okay. Now, the word stick out has to do with what? How do you know if it sticks out or not? It's always based on the data prior to it, right? It's based on the data prior to it. If the data prior had smaller candles, then obviously this one would look like it sticks out. You're like, whoa, these are much bigger than the previous candles. So it obviously sticks out. It, it's what gets you. 
the brain is watching the same thing. It sticks out. So now when there's a pullback coming in, watch carefully. There's a pullback coming in, two red candles coming in. Okay, still in this area, above support resistance, massive green candles were coming in. And then two red candles come in and people are like, hmm, I wonder if it's gonna be a sell. And then it starts to pull back up again. Do you think someone is still looking at a sell when the greens come again? No. Because they're still thinking, oh my God, maybe the buy is gonna jump back up because the buy is looking to bounce up really hard. It's, it's flying. So maybe it's gonna fly again. Okay. Then it goes down again, but doesn't make a lower low. Do you think people are still looking at cells? Are like, ah, oh, yeah, that's it's a cell. I knew it. No, their eye is still oogling that big red green movement all the way to the top. Let's move it further. Yeah, they're confused at this stage. Let's move it further. Oh, green's coming in. What do you think about the sellers right now? Sellers feeling confident. No, yeah, and Ben's, that's actually correct. They might even think about buying. They're like, oh, it's not going down, it must be going up. So if everyone's buying, who, who's gonna make money from who? So here's the next part. Keep looking, keep looking. No higher high and then kaploosh. Everything down the toilet, right? It's all gone down the drain and it's clearly visible. It's broken the recent low. What is happening to everyone's eyeballs? What are they looking at now? What sticks out? The cell. Yeah, so where's all the cells happening? Did they sell from up here? Definitely not, right? All their cells are gonna be like, oh my God, oh my God, it's, it's gotta be in this area, I know it. I need to sell it now before my Ferrari leaves me again for the 100th time today, <laughs> right? So you see how the whole, whole mindset, it's not trading based, but it's very psychological based. Okay, so let's move this further to see once these sellers start to activate or stop out buyers, the retail buyers, that's when the big boys start to gear up and saying, okay, let's party. Okay. And that's when they try to start moving the markets in. And there you have it. Higher high sequences happen only after that. Okay. So have you guys ever had a, had a moment where you have this feeling of, man, Naveen, sometimes I do all my things correct, where it's like, I know this is buyer's territory. Okay, how many of you guys are in the Mastering Price Section course with me? Okay, I want you guys to answer, answer this question to me very, very honestly as possible. So I know Naveen, it's in a buy mode here. I completely get that, but then I, so I'm waiting for the seller looking at the rubber band man coming down. So here comes a seller coming down. I can see seller coming down. Pulls back a little bit, seller's coming down again. Oh, no lower low. And then it's almost like, hey, it looks like the sellers quit. I need to prepare for my buys. Now, I get stopped out because my stop loss is just here below the recent low. And then it come, market comes down, stops me out. And after stopping me out, the trade works. And, and I'm starting to sit there and feel like, oh man, why does this happen to me? Does it, do you guys get that feeling? Okay, so I just gave you that missing link of timing. This is that missing link to understand, is there anyone selling here? And if there's no one selling, why will your buy work? I don't care how good the pattern and design is. I don't care how good the strategy or the system or the robot looks, you know, 2017 model. If there is, everyone is buying, then who's gonna make money? Basic, basic, basic stuff. Okay. Yeah, so 
This, when you sell at areas like this as anticipation from this knowledge, you can actually make a lot of money. This is called counter trend trading. However, very risky, very aggressive, but very profitable. Do you guys see how you guys can pull out profits from this? Whether as a seller or a buyer afterwards, or you know to be a little bit more generous with your stop losses, knowing this information now that I can't be buying so quickly. But if I bought it so quickly, I can't be so stingy on my stops and be really, really tight. Okay, so where are we supposed to buy them? Good question, good question. So where are we supposed to buy them? Wait, are, who, are you, uh, I was gonna say, are you in the mastering price action course? No, okay, um, so look at this. This whole section here, when we say no one is, uh, I'll, I'll explain it, I'm just joking. I'm gonna explain it, don't worry. Um, we can see this whole area that no one is actually selling in this stage, but here the sellers begin. You start counting your rubber band man or your seller's movement from here. Sellers are coming in, they pull back. Sellers come in again, no lower low, okay? okay that's a sign of failure. And then sellers die completely, 150%, they're out of the game. Okay, that means sellers are out. Give me a pullback for me to buy. This comes in as your pullback and you're like, I'm going to hit it on any pullback I get after that. That becomes your buy territory. Does that make sense? And that gives you the final frontier of once you hit the buy from there, prices will not mess with you afterwards. You see the difference of what happens to the price after this buy versus if you buy it from here, what happens to the price after that? That's what we're always sitting there. Out. This used to happen to me all the time. And I was like, my buy worked, but it stopped me out first. You know, it, it, it stopped me and then it worked. Right? And it's a horrible feeling. That's the worst thing that can happen to a trader is it stops you and then it worked. It's like, oh my God, at least tell me it's a loss, but it's not even a loss, it worked, but it stopped me out first. <laughs> That's the worst feeling ever that can happen. So this will happen time and time again. The, the whole knowledge is around this. Um, Bella, don't worry, I'm gonna go with one more example on this. One more example on this. <laughs> the laptop is gonna fly out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So when you're looking at this, many things come to mind. My broker did this, you know, my, uh, you know, my trading system is not working. You know, so, so many fingers start pointing at this moment because it's not, it's not that it's just the idea of, it's just the logic of what is happening needs to be very clear. What is happening to me clear so because many uh, I need a better broker and stuff like that. So it's not a matter of that. I think my internet is slowing down. Can, can everyone hear me just fine? Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Sorry. I just saw it turn red for a second. So, okay. Fantastic. A little choppy. Yeah, it should be fine now. Um, I can see it going going into orange sometimes. Anyways, let's just keep going. Let's keep going. Everything's recorded anyways, so don't worry. I'm just glad you guys are here. Let's keep going, and we're going to go straight into the next example. Okay. So... Let's take a look at another thing. How about this one? Uh, let's take a look. Screenshot. Okay. Here we go. Uh, I'm in red. Let me give it a sec. The recording will be released uh, pretty much uh, 30 minutes uh, after the webinar. I just need time to uh, edit it. But if you guys want to sit through me drinking in the beginning, I don't need to edit. I can just upload it immediately. 
Okay. Anyways, you'll get the email for the recording. Don't worry. So let's let's keep going. Let's keep the uh, keep the conversation flowing. So take a look at this one. Everyone see the cell? Okay. Everyone see that cell? No. Everyone see Skype? Seriously? One second here. Why is my Skype on the screen? Okay. Um, da, 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 da. How about now? Uh, are you guys seeing my my charts? No. Is that better? Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Charts now. Good. 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 Okay. Let's go. Let's go. No time to waste. No more of this chit chat. Let's keep going. All right. Sellers territory. Here we go. Big sellers coming in, right? All eyes on this thing. Like what in the world is that red drop? What is that? Right? Now, tell me this thing here. The moment he gets to this area, would you say this green candle that pulls back, is that good? How much of a pullback is that? Is that 2%, 5%, 30%, you know, 15%, 20%, 30%. I would say 30%. Yeah, that's pretty high. That's pretty high. And how did it come up? Was it slow and gradual? No, it was fast. When you get a movement like that, eyes watch that as well. They're like, whoa, what's happening? Why is it reacting so quickly? Is it not coming down? Was the downward movement a fake? Is it gonna start rising now? Because it's so quick. That speed is what makes people's emotion, you know, start up. So once that speed happens, it's like, okay, here comes the buyers. Here's the buyers. Now, you know it's a seller because you're looking at this as a seller's territory, right? You're like, okay, sellers, sellers, sellers. Buyers coming up, pull back. Buyer comes up again, no higher high. This time, struggle, struggle, struggles, boom, dies. Now, if the buyer is dead, it's like, give me any pullback and I'm gonna sell it. If you take any pullback and you sell it, this sell goes on to make lower lows and that sell doesn't mess with you afterwards. They don't try to come up to spike you, take you out or anything because the logic of, I do believe there are buyers here. So now I'm showing you a, a normal one where their buyers can actually start stepping in. However, if you have doubts that the buyers are there or not there, you put your stop loss a bit higher than usual. You don't keep it too tight. Does that make sense? So it all has to do with this basic concept of understanding of who am I playing against? Who's going to put money in my pocket? If there is no one there, the trade will not work, period. Cool. All right. Let's take a look at some other stuff. Let's do some more examples. Hey, if we do more and more examples, don't worry about it. We'll, uh, you'll, you'll get better. So those of you who are having questions, uh, let's keep going doing more examples and uh, it'll be better. Let's take a look at Aussie CAD. Let's see what Aussie CAD's been up to. Okay, I got a trade running on this one here. So let's take a look at, let's see, which area can we look at? There's two. Okay, I'm gonna take a screenshot. Here we go. All right. So, I'm gonna draw a circle, let me know when you see it. Fantastic. Who is the rubber band man? Okay, the rubber band man is a concept I teach, Bella. Um, that's actually in the mastering price section course. We'll, we'll go over that in a little bit, don't worry. Don't worry, Let's just, just, just hang in there. Yeah, the MPA course. Okay, so big sell here. 
right? Everyone see that seller? Would you say this is bringing in buyers? Definitely, definitely. Because the first movement the buyer did was 50%, straight up, full speed. They're like, okay, buyers are here. I know I need to sell, but buyers are here. So let me wait for the buyers to finish their turn. Now the buyer goes up, he pulls back, he goes up again, he pulls back, he goes up again. And we're like, wait a minute, this was my seller's territory. I'm supposed to sell from this zone, but he keeps going higher and higher and higher. Well, it's out of the question then. It's out of the question. It's purely buyer's market now. Okay, so we're going to leave that one alone. Let's go on to the next one then. What happens to the next guy? The next guy says, here, another cell that makes people's eyes water up. They're like, what happened? Here's a quiz for you guys. This movement up, would you say buyers come back? Is there buyers coming in there? Mm-hmm. Good, good, trick question. I like to get people like this. But you'll learn faster this, with this way. Okay, I think so. Small buyers, yes. Uh, but sellers are still coming in. Yes, for support. It comes back up. It has to. Yes, with lots of smiley faces. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me do this. Let me do this. I do this thing uh, with some of my students. I'm going to do it for you guys too. Ready? Let me know when you guys see my circle. Okay. I want you to focus on this thing. Okay, what, what kind of phone do you guys have? You guys have an iPhone, an Android, a Blackberry? What do you guys have? What's the most amount of phones here? Let's see, what, what kind of phones do you guys have? iPhone, Android, Samsung, iPhone, iPhone, S6, iPhone, Nokia, Android, Android. Okay, you know what? You know what? They're, they're there's too many. I was hoping it would be like more leaning towards one type, but it's <laughs> it's not. So let's just use the word phone, okay? Let's use the word phone. This is the product, is a phone. I don't know why my is. Okay. It's a phone. Ah, sorry. So the product is a phone. Let's say the phone is costing $300, okay, starting price, $300 starting price, prices rise, prices rise, prices rise, now the price for the phone is $500, people are still buying it, people are still buying it, prices rise, prices rise, prices rise, now the price is $700, okay. people are still buying it, prices rise, Prices rise, prices rise. Now it reaches 1,500. Okay, 1,500. Not many people buy, so the market starts to discount the phone and says, "Okay, you know what? I'm gonna make the price low, hundred, um, around 500." Okay, people start buying again. It's starting to go up. Prices go up to 700. Comes down. Prices start rising to 1,500 again. What do you think is going on in your mind at this point? Think about it very carefully. It's gonna go down again. Why? Why this mentality of it? Because it went down last time, the price when it reached 1,500, it's gonna go down again. So the, the human psychology does not say, it just says, oh, last time it was at 1500 I know, trust me, it will go down again. That's how people think in the market as well. They see previous prices. This is why support and resistance is created. It's based on this logic. Does everyone understand that? Yes? Okay. Based on this logic, we're going to go back to uh, one second. We're going to go back to uh, the chart now. Based on this, keep this logic in mind. Okay, this is how human beings think. This is how they think.
Now think to yourself, prices are in this area. Let me know when you guys see the black box. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Some people, some of you guys are having your aha moments, and that's what I like to do. I, I want to break through the information that you guys understand it the best way possible. Whether we use analogies or, I don't know, we talk about anything, but you need to get the information. That's the goal. Okay, so taking about, taking about, take, uh, taking about, talking about looking at this one here, what happened when the phone was offered for a discount? Down here, they kept lowering the price for the phone, and the price reached two hundred dollars. What happens when there was a discount at two hundred dollars? Everyone bought it. They gobbled it up. Yum 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 yum. They just ate it up. They're like, oh my god, I love that price. What do you think is going to happen again if price comes back down to that price again? If there's a discount at two hundred again, what do you think people will th start thinking? Yeah, buy it before it goes back up again. It's going to increase again. Yes, yes, good. Keep that concept in mind. Now, same concept here. If I go like this and say this low never existed, it's a faker because on a higher time frame, that's just a tail. That's a low. That's a low. That's a low. And now we're back at that same low. And look at every time prices come near this area, what happens to the price? Up. And how much up? Does he stop when he goes up? He just shoots. This logic needs to transfer forward. You basically bring the human mentality forward. They're looking at this as it's gonna be a buy again. So they hit that buy at this point thinking or, or saying, I don't care about this anymore. I know it's scary, but it's coming up so hard, it must be a buy. Hence, that buy becomes valid for those traders. For us, we're still sellers, but that buy becomes valid for those, for those buyers. Does that make sense? So to know if someone is buying there or not, you need to understand the logic of what makes people buy and what makes people sell. Okay. Good, right? Good, good. Okay. How many of you guys do not know about the Mastering Price Action course and don't know actually even what it is? You know, because I, I hear many questions about, you know, you know, what is a rubber band man and this and that. The Mastering Price Section course is a course that I had released for basically $6,000 for a lot of my students back in the day. I've condensed it, made it into a seven-week course, and I've released it for everyone for $197 last year. Okay, we, <laughs> we haven't raised the price yet. I've been busy on my birthday and, and, and everything. So it's still available today for $197. If you can get your hands on it, get your hands on it. How many of you guys already have it? How many of you guys can help me give testimonials? You guys like it? Has it changed the way you trade? There you go. There you go. For those of you who do not have it, that's your testimonials, live testimonials in front of you. I don't like posting testimonials on the site and everything. It, it, it's, it's, it, it's garbage, I think. I think this way is much better. Okay. So uh, Armo is going to post a link for you guys. Uh, if you guys want to pick it up, you guys can pick it up. But... As I promised to you guys, I'm going to show you guys my trade I did. My trade. Okay? Let me show you guys my trade. Uh, um, Armo, can you post it into the chat room? Because I think it keeps opening a page on my end. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. I feel like you're hacking into my computer, Armo. Just opening up pages left and right on my end. What are you doing? <laughs> okay. So let me go into the trade I did uh, from the last uh, two or three uh, uh, webinars. Okay. How many of you guys were here in the last webinar or the webinars before that? Yeah. Do you guys remember the trade I was doing for PoundCAD? 
it has been running for like a month or something like that. Okay, let me go and show you. Okay, this is the obviously the course. So if you guys want it, you guys can pick it up there. Um, here we are. Da, da, da. There's my pound cat right here. Okay, I closed it earlier today. Uh, this is Prince basically making fun of me, <laughs> saying that's how I waited for this trade because this trade I pulled it out of the weekly. So I took some time and I go through this in the last three weeks of my webinars. This is how I took the trade. Now, before I go into explaining, the, I'm going to explain the whole trade. I'm going to show you how the trade ended, how much money I made, and then I'm going to go back to the charts and you and I are going to work together on why I took this trade based on what you've learned today. Deal? We're going to practice this together. So I'm going to make sure you guys already understand and can try to re-explain it back to me. If you cannot explain it back to me, you're in trouble. That means you're not listening. <laughs> okay, so let's go straight into it. Let's go straight into it. So, all right, let's move this out of the way. Here we go. So that's the trade I took on, uh, let's see what day was this, sorry. Uh, this was posted on a month ago, basically. There, there you go. It's posted a month ago, and it started off making, you know, 600, uh, sorry, 760 pounds or whatnot. Started going forward, and I closed the trade today. Uh, this is how it it dropped finally. Now, whatever the pound had to do with this, it's not my concern. I see what people are doing. I see how the trade works, and I see what how the markets are moving my job is to sell this what fundamental news helped trigger this again not my concern okay so i go forward this is the trade i did i pulled out 5500 pounds from this uh overall so took a month slow trade okay these are a lot of the elite members asking questions about it so we're going to be you know answering those questions in a bit but let's go into this thing. Let's let's discuss it. Let's see if you guys can pick up on it and see, well, what, what did this guy do? Okay, let's go to Pound CAD. Okay, Pound CAD, here we are. I'm gonna go to the weekly first. Okay, here we are on the weekly. I'm gonna take a screenshot. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna remove this, okay. Um, Sir Pipalot, that was in pounds, so. I I guess slightly more, six thousand U.S. dollars, I believe, something like that. I'm not a, I'm not a numbers guy. I'm a forex trader. <laughs> so, um, let's take a look at this now. <coughs> Sorry, uh, let's take a look at this now. So, I, I traded a standard lot on this. Traded a standard lot on this. Okay. So on the weekly chart, I first saw this. Okay, I first saw this on the weekly chart, and I was like, okay. The markets have been coming down very aggressively. Okay, very, very aggressively. I'm gonna take a screenshot for all of you guys. Okay, if I have to, I'll go five minutes over the one hour time limit that I have on this uh, webinar, but it's okay. I think we need this. So, but where is it? Okay, everyone see my circle? I'm drawing it right now. Okay, so a big massive sell came in, okay, in uh, early October. Massive, massive sell came in. For me, it's like sellers are dominating, okay, which means this is all seller's territory, okay? If it's all seller's territory, yeah, support resistance, yeah, the sellers are dominating. Now, for some reason, you know, gamblers get activated in this point, and they're like, well, can't sell forever. Right? When you when you see this movement upwards come in, would you say there's buyers in there? Yeah, definitely. They're not tiny stuff, right? There are definitely buyers in there. That got me interested. I was like, okay, well, let's take our time in November, in December. I started stalking it. I started becoming one of those crazy boyfriends, you know, and Pound Cat was my girlfriend. I'm just stalking it like crazy. So I'm watching it, I'm watching it. I did all the buys. I'm gonna show you some trades. I did the buys up until then. I did the buys all the way up until here. And then I started selling after that. So let's go into the daily chart to show you how the buys started performing. 
Okay, knowing that buyers are activated in here, let me go into here, boom, boom, boom. Okay. All right, so this was that big line I drew on the weekly saying this is all in seller's market. Now for me to sell, obviously I need buyers. I cannot sell my phone to other people who are selling the phone. It makes no sense. <laughs> I need to sell the phone to someone who wants to buy the phone. Simple logic. Okay. So I need to see buyers come in. So I saw the buyers start coming in. Now that the buyers are coming in, we're like, okay, come on, baby. Let's see what you can do. He comes up. He pulls back. Okay. Buyers showing some sign of struggle. I'm still interested, but I know at this stage, we need to activate the buyers. How do you activate a buyer? Does any any buyers buying from this area down here? No. So when do you think the buyers actually start buying? Yeah. Towards the top later in this area. So a little, little bit of a pullback and they're going to start thinking about, oh, it's coming down again. But it was going up so well. But once it starts going up again, and look how strong it goes up. Does it look like a higher high? It looks like a higher high, but look at the speed of it. Very hard for these people. They're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Buy it. Buy it. It's going up. As they buy it, they get knocked out of their whims as they buy it, and it gets smacked right back down. But how much does it smack down? Is it... 100% or only 50% or 60%, something like that, right? It, it gets knocked down a little bit, but it tells me one thing that there's no higher high. That's what it tells me. But what it tells the buyers is it's still a buy. It's still a buy. It's still a buy. They're the, that stubborn buyer that just cannot see the sell anymore. They're so stubborn on the buys that they cannot see we're entering the territory of a big boy. You know, where it's like, you know, that uh, in, in those movies, you always got that one kid wandering into that empty house and thinking, hey, it can be interesting. It looks haunted. I've seen all the movies that says it's haunted, but I'm going to go inside anyways. <laughs> it's like that one kid, you know, he knows it's, you know, I'm going into danger zone, but he'll go in anyways. So, it's, it's like that area here. So they keep buying. And for me, it's like, when are they going to buy? When are they going to buy? Right here. Do you think they buy right here when this little green candle comes up? Okay. okay. So if I start to draw a little range here, there's a little range there. You see these green candles popping out of that range? That will activate the buyers. That's going to activate the breakout traders. That's going to activate the people who had the idea initially that, oh, there's got to be a buy. That activates all of them. And at that point, that activates Naveen. And Naveen hits the sell. And soon, it's going to activate all of you guys to hit the sell too. That's what we're here for. That's why we do all these trainings, right? And that's when we hit the sell. Now, in the sell... I had to sit through this nonsense a bit because there were the buyers were still alive. So in this nonsense, uh, you guys saw I traded 0 0.7 lots on this, right? Or for some of you, that's like 70,000 units or seven mini lots. It was a big trade. I had a lot of flying. I went to Maldives. I did everything. So I couldn't really babysit the trade. So I took a smaller position. But the moment I saw it retracing here like or, or holding on, I was like, I can add a position. So I added additional 20% to the trade, taking the trade all the way up to one standard lot. Okay, using this logic, you can also start to add in positions. You can scale in. Okay, there's a whole technique about scaling in and scaling out. You know, we're not gonna get into that today because that's very advanced. But how many of you guys start to understand you guys can feel the logic of, look how strong it is, look how strong it is. Is the buyers here or not? You guys can feel it now? You can't sell if there's no buyers. So make sure to feel, are the buyers here or not? So 
Having that said, keep one thing in mind and one thing only. If you want to do a sell, if you want to do a sell, you need to think 400, you need to, wait, where's my line? You need to think 400% like a buyer. You need to become the buyer men mentally before you can actually see the sell coming in. The moment as a buyer, you feel like, oh my God, I, I quit. That's when your sell activates. Do not get stuck thinking about sell so much that you're forcing your sell on the trade. It's not going to work. Don't force it. Don't force it. Try to understand the buyers. The more the buyers come in, the better your trade is going to perform. Okay. No, this is what you see on my chart, uh, Nuri, is exactly how my chart looks all the time. No indicators, no volume, no nothing. I trade bare bones, almost naked too sometimes, depending on if I'm still in bed and trading. That's really bare bones, right? I guess. Yeah, no divergence, nothing. Yeah, I, I go bare bones, completely bare bones. No need, no need. You just need to understand logic of... That's <laughs> savage. You just need to understand the logic of how the markets are performing. You know, if you understand that logic, then, you know, you just, you just, you know, take the step ahead of the crowd. You take the step ahead of the crowd and that's it. That's your strategy. That's your, that's your winning game. Your, your golden key, your, what is that word people use? Uh, uh, wait, what's that word? It's coming to me. It's coming to me. It's called uh, the Holy Grail. Yes. Yeah, the Holy Grail. That's your Holy Grail. Is understanding the logic of other traders. No, no, no. I'm wearing clothes. I'm wearing clothes. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to buy, you need to know when sellers are going to die. So you follow the sellers very, very very logically so once again for those of you who do not have the mastering price action course get on it right now um, we go in there we've got a lot of students in there we got over a thousand positive reviews if this course cannot help you I almost promise you no other course can I'm that confident and for those of you who have any doubts there's a money-back guarantee for 30 days I put my word on it I put my name on it it's fine but I'm telling you right now, if this course cannot help you, then nothing else can. It's that simple. You can go out there taking any course, and I will promise you, you'll come back here. Because the other courses out there, they just tell you basic support, resistance, and all that nonsense. It's not going to break it to you. You need a trader teaching you how to trade. You, you cannot have a mentor teaching you how to trade. It's not going to work. Okay, I'm sorry if I sound like a salesman right now, but I really want to make make sure you have a breakthrough. <laughs> so this is why you know I also invite my you know students in here too, so you guys can actually, if you have questions, ask any of the students here. It's open to ask anyone. So again, let me. So any questions up until this point? Any questions? Let me change the spot here. Do the course you will find out the rubber band man is yes the rubber band man's in the course uh the concept of everything is in the course no i'm not drunk yet uh see the glass is still full still full uh i get so i got you know when i'm teaching i can't really uh uh focus on drinking or anything and drinking takes focus come on can't waste it <laughs> uh is the course good for beginners it's good for intermediate and onwards we're making a beginner's course coming out soon. So if you have some knowledge of support resistance and stuff like that, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Don't worry about it. Oh, um, so one more thing. I'm creating a beginner's course, actually. It's going to be free. It's going to be available for everyone. Uh, so you guys can definitely share that with your friends or family, whoever you want to help out. You know, 
a uh, lot of my friends and family in fact i have some of my friends in here in the in the chat room right now actually these are the people i've Okay, can you guys hear me now? Sorry about that. I think I got disconnected. I'm telling you, so, you know, I take trading really, really seriously, and I like to share it with my, you know, my friends, my family, and everything. I, I even teach my girlfriend, and that's my girlfriend right there right now. So you can see she she's constantly trading as well. So, so, it's it's I'm gonna be I'm gonna be posting up uh, uh, the basics course for you guys so you guys can share it with friends and family and I'm gonna be in there occasionally coming in helping you know putting in analogies making sure everyone can understand uh, thank you for the wishes um, really do hope we get to see the market with the risk perspective that I do uh, okay Caleb Naveen please real quick what should the normal buy in units for us beginners okay the normal buy it's not about units okay when it comes to money management right you need to understand two two logics okay what do you guys know about money management when you take a trade what should you do let me hear it let me hear it what should you do risk to reward okay what else what else when you take when you open a trade how much how much of a risk can you take Okay, you see, you see how the average person has a numerical percentage base. So what I want to teach you when it, when it when it comes to unit size, don't think in terms of percentage. If you think in terms of percentage, what's going to happen is it all de determines on your lifestyle. You see, if your account balance is let's say one thousand dollars and you're trading one percent per trade, whether you win or lose, you're not going to care. You're not re you're really not going to care. But if you're trading ten million dollars and you're trading one percent, you're going to care. So you might even go down to half a percentage. What you need to do is, here's a trick I tell all my students, is stop wasting time with the stupid logic of use a percentage. Calculate how much do you spend in a day outside of trading. If you're spending $100 a day, that's your number. If that's $100 a day is what you're spending, then you need to make one trade approximately $30 or $20. That's gonna be per trade, because if you have one, two, or three losses in a day, it's not going to make you feel like you want to vomit. You're going to be okay with it. You're not going to kill the dog in the house. You're not going to break your laptop. You're going to be okay. <laughs> so that's your number. That's how you, how you work with uh, the unit size. 
Okay. Um, okay. What do you say about trading with uh, no leverage? Um, I use a leverage of 50 is to one. Okay. Um, leverage double edged sword. Yes, I agree with that. Most of the time it's damaging. So if you were to take my simple advice for it, stay away from leverage as much as you can. The lower you can, the better you can. My dog just ran out of the room. Uh, it's just that which you can afford out of crippling you. Yeah. So you use this technique, the one you explained on smaller time frames. Yeah, it's the same thing. Um, the one I explained today, the human uh, trading sequence, happens everywhere. Everywhere. Happens everywhere. Okay. Beginner course is going to release probably in March. Give me some time because just like I make my other courses, the beginner course is going to be the internet's best thing you've ever seen. So give me some time to make it nice. Uh, make it entertaining as well and make it really really good Okay, are you Arabian sir? No, I'm not Arabian. So I, I know I look like that. So thank you, but uh, I'm not Arabian um, uh, I'm my parents are Indian. I was born in Dubai. I grew up in Korea the US uh, I live in Hong Kong now uh, and Thailand, so I don't know where home is um, I'm, I'm in Montreal every year. I do speak Korean as well. So uh, I don't know where home is for me. I'm just, I guess, a citizen of the earth. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm constantly in the U.S. as well. My parents live in the U.S. So, yeah. Uh, I'm a beginner, Naveen. Can I get the price uh, mastering course? Yeah, the mastering price actually course, um, Magnaliso. Uh, the link is going to be shared in the, uh, in the chat room. Yeah, you can just use that blue link and you can get your course if you haven't got it already. Okay, so here's the plans coming up for my travel plans. Um, next week, I might be in Singapore. I have to go meet one of my students, Keith. He's going to be there. So I might be in Singapore next week. If, if you guys are there, let me know. If you guys are in Hong Kong right now, let me know. Uh, and next month, I, I will be in Bangkok. The members are coming down to Bangkok uh, from elite members. Uh, London is on the list probably um, April. Does it start getting warm in April? When it gets warm, I'll be there. So London is the first thing as soon as it gets warm, I'll be there. I promise you. It needs to get warm. I'm not going to come right now. It's still cold. Okay. So that's it for today, guys. Sorry for making it drag on a little bit longer. Thank you all for being here. I love you guys. Uh, thank you for all the wishes as well. I will see you guys in exactly two weeks. In two weeks, we're going to catch up again. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.